Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is a new episode of the Spectating series. I know that rank has not reset and we've run into a lot of unfortunate circumstances happening with, with ranked. But that doesn't mean we're gonna stop improving and talking about how to improve in Apex Legends. I know I kind of sound like a little worn out, I guess. I mean, I've been running around quite a bit recently and I feel like a lot of people are in plat right now who are obsessed about improving. I guess uh, my main, I'm still trying to get to Masters myself i didn't get there okay i think these guys are contesting us and if they do you know the, the best part about the series as well one it's gonna be a lot of commentary two if we die we'll watch to the end so it's not the end of the world if we get eliminated early because that's just kind of how it uh i'll let that guy grab that and we have height just gotta find where the enemy is it's never ideal to contest off drop by the way you know you want to kind of land a little safe if possible okay there's one knock no. That's not good. Let's see if we can feel this out. We've knocked one. We're kind of just split right now, but let me get the banner. Pretty good. Let's see where they're at. There, there's one. Why don't we just gotta get the last one? There he is. There it is. There we got it. GG's. All right, so break down what happened there. You know what's interesting? It's always hard to communicate and calm whenever stuff is going on, and that's something I need to get better at. There's a lot of things I personally need to get better at at this game. Uh, well, let's res right there. I just realized I'm running to the wrong one. I've been mentally trying to figure out how to get past walls, but also how to teach you guys everything. You know, patience is really important, but also looking for those opportunities to create. You know, I've been having a lot of conversations with, uh, with Hollow about them recently. About creating value. And I know everyone learns a little differently, right? But it's been very difficult to try to figure out how to convey that and teach it. Just know that I, I understand that it's it's frustrating to improve on Apex Legends. And that's the whole point of the spectating. I, it, I don't know, to this, today's spectating just feels a little different. I wonder if that's just the way the community is feeling across the board. Or maybe I'm just talking way too much about how everything feels, but it's just a little interesting. So let's talk about some base things that are kind of important here. I think. One thing they've been trying to do is get back to fundamentals. And I think everybody, I can remind everyone, no matter your skill level, fundamentals are key. I'm gonna show you a spreadsheet, or I guess a notepad that I've been working on recently. And I've been doing it in R5, just trying to get back to the roots and what really works for me. And on screen, you're gonna see, okay, let's just take a look at these teams, as well as on screen, there's a few things. One, on screen, you're gonna see the teams that are located. So ideally, you could clear your back here, you can move forward to zone, but zone you want to ideally take height here here's pretty good there it's mostly like gonna pull on the left side of the map i think but you can do two things when you're here is that you can rotate and you clear your back so you can push forward for opportunities i always say just try to make as much momentum as possible and try to keep upgrading your armors for your teammates as much as possible so you don't lose momentum momentum is really really important in this game i uh, i've always agreed with hollow on that statement you know so just, just so Hollow doesn't watch his videos, like, how dare you take that statement? I've always agreed, you know, you got to keep up your armors. You can't just stay stagnant, right? And so the other thing when it comes to fundamentals, I was also going to share on the screen, was how much I've been trying to also make sure that I am keeping up and making sure my aim is solid, that I know how to position, that I know what I'm doing. And that includes just practicing with every single loadout and every single gun, right? Because if you don't do that, you'd be surprised how much fundamentals can go. There's a team on the right. That's not good. At least I saw somebody, I thought. Wow. There it is. Come on, peek, 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 peek. Shoot, where's the other guy on the left? There's gotta be more on the left, right? Over here. Yeah, well, we isolated one, and I kind of whiffed there, I'm not gonna lie, which is unfortunate. There we go, got it. This is a little messy. This is not my uh, ideal. There's a grenade. Using utility is also important. The grenade was a little overthrown. Oh my gosh.
Nice, wow, good cleanup. There's another team right here, though. This would actually be really great if we clean this up efficiently, because then our backs will be cleared. And then when we push in, we'll have a higher chance of winning. KP is really important to get, especially whenever you get to diamond and get to plat. You're going to realize that if you don't get kills early on, then you're going to pretty much lose all of your momentum. And that's pretty important. Because if you lose all your momentum, you're kind of screwed. I'm not going to lie. I've been trying a lot of different things. And I'm going to make some future videos on this. Because I've been thinking a lot. I'm like, I'm never just satisfied with making sure that... I know these are supposed to be filled with tips. So I'm not trying to like turn this into like a pity party or anything but i've been really thinking about how i can get you guys to all improve and also make progression to feel like that you're actually doing better at the game and i've been really taking that to heart and thinking it through a whole lot more recently i hope that we kind of nail something down as we keep going but just know that my content is is not going to stop essentially so let's talk about those those foundational tools that we're looking at here one kind of overextended technically we were two up top over there but when you hesitate on opportunities, like you saw the Revenant right there, it creates an opportunity for us to win the fight. So momentum and speed is really, really important. And that's one of the hardest parts is that sometimes you may be wiring yourself for not succeeding in those moments because you're overthinking them. Me, I, I, I'll talk from my own personal experience. I'm kind of an idiot, to be honest. So what I do is I try to, and this is probably, it's good and bad. I try to work on fundamentals and what I would do in each scenario and react to them. And sometimes whenever you do that, you create bad habits. So it's important to try to create really good habits of when you push and when versus when you don't. Now make sure that pushes are done with knowledge, how many teams are nearby. Like that one team right there that was rotating, honestly, we could have gotten third by Echo. We're very lucky that didn't happen, but also much the, t the speed in which teams are moving too. I probably hit this. I get a beacon real quick. Hold on. Since we're a little late anyways and rotate. I mean, we're a little late in rotation, so I could just hit this real quick. If I die, I guess it's on me, but might as well since we know where end zone is. Knowledge is power, momentum, speed, being late to rotation, unless you're getting a lot of eliminations, can be very beneficial. When we look at how the rest of the lobby is kind of flowing, I'm not really worried. There's going to be a lot of teams here. There's probably a few already hunkered down. Wow, that is kind of what we were guessing before, to be honest. Left side calling that was a good spot. That was a good spot. One thing that'll help everyone know where a good spot to hold is, is by just knowing where the power positions are on the map. Meaning like, does it have height? Can you see a lot of the map? Can you maintain pressure? Maintaining pressure and keeping that momentum is really important. So that's going to be kind of the theme for today. And maintaining momentum even means, I, I guess let's kind of pull this back to fundamentals as well. Momentum could also mean just diligently practicing and then taking the momentum into in-game and then not being afraid to make mistakes and, and push whenever necessary. There are unnecessary pushes and then there are necessary pushes, right? Of whenever you should get into an encounter and then when you can get out. The better you are with your fundamentals when it comes to mechanics, movement, everything, the more opportunities you have. And that can also make it a little harder. Let's say that you have some pretty strong aim. Sometimes that can create a world where you're like i can always win these encounters because technically based on your skill set yes you, you technically could so just make sure you find the right windows and you capitalize on those moments whenever you can so fighting off drop is not always ideal but it can work especially if you take the better positioning when you drop off drop so when we dropped off there i had height i had a lot of visibility i could see what's going on and then we singled out best we could each individual right that's pretty much what you need to start doing I mean, we hold that building. I mean, everyone's going to want it. It's going to be a little rough to hold early on, but in the long run, it should pay off. Oh, there's a team right there. Look at that. White armor? That's crazy. Those guys got white armor. There's an example of momentum whenever it's lost. Because otherwise, you know, people who fought, people who are hitting the harvesters, rotating, moving around, are going to net a stronger win than others, partly because of that. I think they're caught out, too. They probably they definitely got him up. Shouldn't overextend too much on this, but... They don't have great armors. Wow, I have such fantastic game today. Oh, we are pushing that. Oh, is he going to tag him? I didn't think he was going to come up and tag him, to be honest. 
Last one's inside or pipe. Was he running? This might be a little greedy. Partly because uh, there's noise nearby, but I'm going to try to finish it. Also today, I'm not using mouse acceleration, which might surprise a few people. So I've been trying a different thing, getting back to fundamentals to try to improve. But also realize whenever I'm taking things too far by changing too many variables. I know it's it's the bad habit of just... I'm a dummy. I'm, I'm a dumb. I'm gonna make sure our backs don't get uh, exposed here. I mean, kind of controlling the lobby right now. I know there's a guy right here. There's some people shooting on the right. I don't know where they went. That's what I mean. Like, I don't want them to run up behind us. At the same time... Oh, that's a... I thought you were a decoy, sir. This would be really dumb to push, by the way. But we might as well get him out. I would call it, this is definitely not smart. But is it fun? You gotta also mix and match fun, too. That's also very important. Like, you have to have fun doing this. But if you have fun, you're gonna improve faster. I think we should go back. Let's go back. Because we got this other team near us. Improvement should be fun. Practice should be fun. Whatever it is, it's like, the, I think the best example I can give is let's say, like, oh, it's a decoy. Let's use an example of, let me hold this up. Actually, yeah, yeah. Watch this other team over here. I know they're right here somewhere. Can I get this guy? He's close. But yeah, I, I'm probably obsessing too much. I'm going to share that because I think a lot of individuals do as well. Probably from watching this content. And at some point, you got to stick with what works for you. And then be really honest with yourself. Sometimes I, I think I go a little overboard by trying too many different variables or trying too many different things. Whenever I just also need to chill myself. So I'm kind of reminding you guys because I also am making the same mistake as well. And I'm going to try to... I, I do stick with things for a good solid while, but I'm just kind of giving that reminder because it should be fun. Now, if you're having fun, I'm not going to stop you and nobody should. But whenever you get to the point where it's not fun, that's whenever you should try to strike a healthy balance, right? Because this game can get really overwhelming to the point where it, you kind of get obsessed about improving all the time, but you're not having fun. So I, I just, I can't stress that enough. Should have taken the shot sooner. Don't know how many teams are here. Three purples. Three purples in there. There's another squad fighting. Maybe another team rolling up. Can't tell if it's three teams or just two. A little hard to tell. Okay. I know the conduit's over there. I would like to get make sure that she's out for... Oh, they're right here, I think. Oh, gosh. Whoa, there was like three different people over there. I thought it was just one. That was a, but then, who's inside? The seer? This is a very strange pull. I've heard it's also a recent bug that stuff has been pulling in very strange spots. Duo and a solo. You saw the solo back there and there's a duo there. This team's right here. So you get an angle here and then push in. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> this is really strange. I don't think this, these zones should be ending like this, to be honest. This is crazy. Hey, this is crazy. Ah. Relax, buddy, relax. And my teammates over there. Duo right there, duo. Moving up on us, behind you, behind you, duo. Ow. Oh, I tried to peek it. I was going to go for that peek, but then his teammates got that angle, and I just got seer cued, so I have to reposition. Oh, team back there. 
Team flying on our back. Let's try to rotate. That's a three stack. I the three stack is the biggest threat. Another tip is also to try to get the three, you know, the bigger threats out first. I guess it's not an awful spot to hold. Doesn't mean we have height. Uh, it's a conduit team. Look at that. Pop a phoenix. Oh shoot, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Oh, this might be the death of the death of us. Yep. I think it's a solo too. That's unfortunate. No, it's a trio. All right, we'll get spectate and keep watching. Keep giving some tips here. We, sh we should have also been watching our backs. So, uh, all this stuff is always hindsight 2020, right? That's a duo. We should have won that. Should have been watching our backs. There's always a choice. When do you heal? When do you just kind of brute force it? This was a really good rotation on this team's part. Oh, I guess it was just them. Interesting. They fought for it. I didn't realize they were going to move. Watching all angles is really important. It can be a little hard whenever you're solo queuing, but if you notice that you're all looking at the same spot, once I realized that, I should have known that this was going to happen. It's very interesting. When you play a lot of Apex, you kind of know what's going to happen. And you can kind of predict it. And sometimes you're going to guess wrong. And that's okay whenever you do guess wrong. That's You shouldn't stress about it. It's really hard because your, your ego in this game can get so deflated so quickly. Especially when you make mistakes. Especially when you, even when you're playing with friends, you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to be the root cause of it. And this BR can be extremely punishing because there's so many different variables from abilities to positioning to things that you can or cannot do. Like an example there, one person over peak, does he go for the res? Do they reposition? What do they do in that scenario, right? And that can be really tough. That's not easy whatsoever. Oh, the cancel the ability. That was brutal, but oh, almost got it. That's pretty close. And now we have a 2v3 at the end there. A lot of duo squads here. Guys, if you guys enjoy the series, don't forget to leave a like. I know today is... I, I've been in a very thoughtful mood recently. Trying to see what we can do to kind of up the quality of the content on the channel. But also push myself. I think if you join me on this journey, we'll, you'll see a lot more of that content. My theory always behind this channel is that if... If I can make the mistakes and learn from it, I really believe that anyone can because I'm not the perfect gamer, but I pride myself in being able to fail over and over again and be persistent enough to push through, essentially. And so through my sheer persistence, I hope to share some of that knowledge. So that's gonna be a little rough right there. This is a hard rotation in. That team that went to the furth for this back has the biggest opportunity to essentially win. Res is a little risky. At this point, you just got to shove, but there's not much you can do. It's what we call a hard gate. An even bigger gate right there. It's just GG's. The other team 100% is going to win. That was good, though. Some of these zones are pretty wonky, though. Have you guys been experiencing some of these zones? I'm kind of curious. And what you've been experiencing, how the flow has been going. Not a bad round. Pretty decent. We've made our mistakes. We had some good moments. We had some bad moments. I think towards the end there, it just was a matter of just making sure you know where opponents are going to run up on. And I should have known that the duo squad might have seen the opportunity because they saw us getting cracked and in a rougher position. I guess here's another mindset. It does not matter how good you are, how much damage you're doing, is whether your damage is effective in that moment, right? So when we got eliminated there, I didn't get to do any effective damage. So maybe we got us up to that point, but we can always do better. I guess that's kind of the overarching theme to kind of reach out to. It's it's a lot of self-reflection. And so with the theme of today's video, I I want to ensure that you guys understand what it means to self-reflect in VOD review. Kind of taking every single step and what you can have done better and what options were at your disposable or disposal whenever you were playing. It's never easy to VOD review and it's never easy to kind of look at things even in hindsight. But also if you can see things in hindsight, hindsight and you're watching this, how can you implement those into your gameplay and try to rewire your brain to really improve? Because you can say consistently, that was a dumb push, that was a dumb push, that was a dumb push. But then you might ask yourself, how do I educate myself and rewire to make sure that I don't do that? And it's really in those moments where maybe you might hesitate longer or maybe you make, might make a larger or bigger mistake, but you'll come out ahead in the long run. It's like taking two, two steps back 
to take maybe four steps forward. I know the saying is actually one step back, two steps forward, but kind of make it a little more dramatic there. All right. So we go again. We're going to spectate to the ends. It's interesting. A lot of teams, I was seeing a lot more cheaters before, but now maybe they're not racing as much because the rank split is kind of extended and nobody really knows what's happening. Why is nobody dropping? I guess I'll just drop. Everyone was still on the ship. I've been seeing this so far this week. It's a little slower. I don't know. I'm kind of surprised, to be honest. Really surprised. I know in Diamond, there's definitely a lot more cheaters that I've experienced. Transparently. But in Plat, it doesn't seem as insane. Comment w what you're experiencing. Because I am generally curious and I, I want the community to kind of know as well. All right. Wow, this lobby is really strange. Oh my god, we are cooking. Okay, they're over there. That's fine. I guess we can rock set no R301. It's not best for close range, but let the console... Make sure your loot path is efficient, that you're very quick. Let's let's try to take everything back down to basics. That's, that's kind of my goal. Everything back down to basics. How can we improve overall... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run like R301 and like Havoc if I can find one. If I'm lucky. And if that's any of the takeaway that you get from today's video, then I, I hope that it, it will help you improve. Try to snowball, build momentum. Don't try to... I know this may... This, this might um frustrate individuals and people. Don't rat. Always feel like you can move around the map. And I think you guys know what I'm talking about, where it kind of feels like that you're stuck or you're pigeonholed somewhere. That's your best opportunity to start to move around and occupy space. I call it occupy space. Everyone has a different word for it. People call it looking for, I know Kahlo calls it looking for value. I'll call it, you know, whatever, whatever terminology you want to want to use to help you, I think it's going to be probably best, best there, but whatever you can utilize in terms of controlling an area on the map is so important to your success in this game. Because you'll know what I'm talking about, where you're stuck in a building, or you're stuck in a corner, or you're, the zone is putting pressure, and you just feel like you can't move, right? That's whenever you need to make a play, or you need to preemptively know that that spot is bad, so then you can make a play, right? Let's say, for example, we were, we were huddled up in this area right here, right? Kind of do a little self-reflection there. Occupying space by looking into different areas, looking for an opportunity to maybe clear the duo out instead, to clear our backs, do something rather than just being stuck in one spot. And it's good and important to hold spots, but always look for the opportunity to kind of start scaling forward and moving forward. When did I drop the, the level three mag? That sucks. I don't even remember doing that. But just know that even players that play in the upper echelon that play a lot in this game also struggle and have to reset to fundamentals. It's just a constant reminder in battle that we have to constantly do and don't skip them. If I'm pretty much telling you how important it is that you don't skip those important fundamentals, then they never go away. I'm still sitting here trying to work on the base control of every single gun, thinking about every encounter and how it should and shouldn't work. I'm going to hold on to that until maybe I find either hit that or vice versa. Okay, so we rotate. We know there was two teams here. They were fighting. We know the zone's closing. We I forget based on the mini map of where they're at. Oh, there they go. Now, my team is nearby, but one of them isn't, so I have to keep that in mind whenever pushing. But we should push this, push up on this to secure some space. Okay, it looks like they're on the height. I have an opportunity to queue up and do something about that. My teammate may not. This might be a dumb push. So the reason why I say dumb, because I know they're up there. There they are. All right. I'm gonna let that be. Maybe I disrupted something, but just for a second, I'll get another cue. I'm, I need this person to run up. Maybe I disrupted something enough to the point where they're actually gonna fight each other. Okay, we'll try again. Oh gosh, hi. They have whites. They have whites up here. Well, that was crazy. She went underneath. Oh gosh. I'm gonna go with the this guy and then queue back up again and reset. 
I probably could have taken him. I wasn't sure that the other duo that was next to him was going to do something. Oh, you're AFK. That sucks. I sh that kind of makes sense. I, Yeah. I Honestly, I think I, I would have died otherwise if they weren't AFK and just chilling there. Uh, that's lucky on my part. All right, we'll go with this then. Probably why she ran. That makes a whole lot of sense now. Watch my back. I'm healing. All right, let's take a look. So they're over there. Let's see if I can get them. That is not a conduit, and I'm missing. I am a master at aiming. All right, All right they're pushing. <laughs> oh, it's just not my day today. So maybe it's not my week. I've had a lot of moments where I'm just like, gosh, I can get so much better at this game, which is probably related to, relatable to all of you guys, probably thinking the same thing. And so you don't, you're not alone in that prospect of always just trying to improve and taking a step forward. It always feels like you're taking a bit of a step back, right? This is a risky play. It's probably going to pull a little more north. At least our backs are cleared for the most part. I know there's a conduit nearby. I think the portal's going to disappear by the time I get here. Actually, let's go there. I didn't think it was gonna be it was gonna be gone, but it's not. You know. Reason why this is a little risky: the solo can give us information on what's over here. here I heard the noise. Oh my gosh! How many bullets is it gonna take for me to land a bullet? Five. It took five. That's sad. Okay. Looks like I know what I gotta go work on today. <laughs> That's all right. Don't let that be the death of you. Everyone misses shots, and this is a great example of missing shots and just the downside of it. Like I said, I did change sensitivities, and sometimes it'll take a second overall to adjust. This poor guy, I mean, he's been chased to the ends of the earth. All right, well, where our backs are clear, we can hit this for information. The only thing I'm really worried about is that there was a conduit nearby, but I'll hit this and I'll see where they're at. Over there is not bad. It's probably going to pull more to the left side. But then again, these zones have been really strange today. I think from what I read, it was a bug. I'm, I'm almost positive. Let's see. Let's see there's a solo around here. Nope, duo fighting here. There's only one team fighting. That's crazy. Right there, right there. I mean, that's going to give us some really good placement. I think one thing that you see that's a common mistake for most teams is that they overcommit to a fight or it takes too long. One and the now, it's good to find opportunities, of course. You want to create space and do things, but you have to realize when stuff takes too long, right? I really want to get that stuff, but I'd rather go fight. When I'm talking about stuff, I'm talking about the harvester, but I'm just going to move forward. It's fine. I only need 73 more damage. All right, let's take a look. I mean, they were like right here, weren't they? Ah, they're there. Do them. Whoa, hello. Um, I'm confused. Are these two different teams? Oh, gosh. Great shot. All right, let's get him. There's another shot that's happening from the far angle. Oh, wow. That's a million miles away. That's a whole different team. That's a whole different team. That's a whole different team. I think there was one here, one over there, and the one in the back. Which is unfortunate. We put a little pressure. And that's what I would call, I guess, overextending. I didn't need to go all the way down. I needed to look for information before I engaged on that fight. So, patience... I, I, instead of, and this is a mistake that I've been doing a lot recently, instead of going for option one, consider option two and three before going in. I didn't need to go in. I got the knock. I needed to look left and right before pretty much committing to that fight, right? 
So it's just a little tip there because it wasn't the end because the individual did got caught out and they were overextended, which is okay because they created an opening. But then we got to make sure that we are considering other options. Could I have thrown a grenade? Could I have queued to a different angle before going down? There's a lot of different things I could have done. It's, oh, even healing. I mean, when I got hit, so maybe slow down just to get a heal, right? That would have been very, very helpful as well. So that's kind of what I'm talking about when it comes to thinking of other options before just going for the most obvious option. That's something I'm working on. I'll, I'll get there with it. And as I get better examples, I'll turn that into a video of like freeze framing and saying, here are the many options. But being able to see those different pathways are so vital because, you know, we all get red in our eyes when we see like a third party going or like, hey, there's a third party. Let's go fight it. And then everyone just gets involved and you just feel like you can't get out. So you should consider the smaller adjustments that you can make in between. And that's something I've been trying to work on myself. Because, we, you know, in the spectating series, we look at the decision makings on a larger scale. But what if as we improve the spectating series, we could start talking even more granular as well? And I think that you guys will find that a whole lot of fun just kind of breaking those things down and i think that a lot of us i mean it's five years into this game as we continue to improve and put a lot of practice in you know what that how that evolves like my tips from three years ago are going to be a lot more detailed now than they were back then my aim should hopefully be better now than it was back then i mean not always the case sometimes you have bad days but you should always rely more on your positioning when you took a fight engaging that because I, I should have batted it was very dumb of me just to kind of just keep going in hindsight 2020 it's turning the hindsight 2020 into something a little bit more powerful by using options so this team is res they have a bit of a rough spot these guys are pretty much going to start full sending them to clear out their backside so they can move forward the best spot as well would also be afterwards to hold this spot very very powerful powerful spot now what they need to do is find an opening, but don't take too much time here, right? By spending too much time, and you know, it's always easier to spectate. Even if you're watching this video, you might say, oh, those are very easy. It's like when you're watching a professional basketball team or NHL team or football team, anything along the lines, you say, why would they do that? When you're actually in it, it's really hard to have your brain complete the task, but also find the right positioning or find the right option, right? I think it's interesting. Uh, I guess this comes to when a uh, legal or the police most, I guess they call it when individuals are on site and they see something, most of that information is a little skewed. If I'm not mistaken, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close to this where it's not, you can't take somebody for fact whenever they're in a high stress environment and the BR tends to create a very high stress scenario where you'll tend to make a lot more mistakes that seem a little more obvious than normal. So you're probably asking the question, how do you do that? It's by repetition. Like this is a pretty greedy fight, but if they can get this by moving back, I can see that as long as they take their time with it and they stay as a group, which they're bundled up pretty great here as they're moving into this encounter. You do have a great opportunity here. Now the lifeline has to heal and all they do, all they have to do is wait. This is where Gibraltar is fantastic as a legend for that reset to kind of get your team bunched up again and use the bubble for protection. It's a really good tip especially when you're playing Gibraltar. Hopefully they don't leave the spot. I mean, I guess because the zones are pulling weird, it probably won't pull here, but I, I, you know, we, you never know. Let's take a look. Oh no, he's about to fall. Oh gosh, that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate. He's falling. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Just commit to it at this point. Oh no, and your teammate did. That climb right there costing them, but really good beam by this guy's part. Are they going to be able to clutch it up? It's going to be really close. Oh my gosh. And they got the res. The Gibraltar is just running away at this point. I guess, you know, at some point you have to decide because, I mean, there's seven squads remaining. And there's just going to be nonstop third parties on that fight, most likely. Because people tend to kind of just dive bomb in or just see the angle or see the opportunity. So my tip there, when you see the opportunity, seize it. But then think about what happens one or two or three sm uh, smaller steps ahead, right? I think you hear them on the left. Am I not mistaken on that? Kind of hard to tell. This guy's got pretty solid aim with the alternator. It's just a matter of can he 
clutch it out with a duo? That's the big question. Like, everyone is just kind of pushing in because they kind of hear the action going on. But it's deciphering who is your biggest threat. And let's say, I know that's a little rough there by the Gibraltar almost falling. And then they, you could tell they had a miscommunication by the team just dropping down on it because they see that their teammate is struggling and what that means. That's, that's, a, that's a tough one. And you'd be surprised how fundamentally the mistakes that you make are so small. Even missing a climb up, like a very simple one, can pretty much cost you the game. Or even just understand the recoil of a certain gun. Did they hear them there? That's good shots. That's Gibraltar. He's going off. He is kill leader. Oh my gosh. Gibraltar's got eight kills. He's cooking right now. See, let's see what he can pull off though. That's gonna be the bigger question. Good bubble there. Oh, just not connecting there. But that, look, that condo is kind of caught out. I was about to say maybe a solo. Happens to be a solo. Good time on trying to take out the horizonal. I've done that mistake as well, where you don't take out the horizonal. And let me tell you, it's a. Uh, that's when I say you got to kind of rewire your brain to make the right decision in that moment. It's like, do you take the horizon ult out or do you get out of it? And most of the time, you just want to program and say, hey, take out the horizon ult. Because everyone's going to benefit, especially if there's going to raise being thrown. You know, Gibraltar's a very slept on legend. The, uh, the amount of power from the reset, the bubble forcing individuals to come towards your space, but also create space whenever it's not created. This is a really great example of it. And this is why for anybody who's playing any legend, any legend can really work in ranked, whether lifeline can be fantastic, depending on your squad, Vantage, Gibraltar, Mirage even. It just depends on how you utilize their kit and with how you play with your squad. Now, of course, there's always going to be legends that are a little bit more meta, right? But you would be very surprised on what you can pull off. So that's why I stress at the end of the day, if you're watching this, fun first and foremost again i know this format could be very talkative a little rambly at some points but i hope that you guys still learn something and that it is educational i think plat for anybody watching i'm very confident all of you guys can get through plat i'm very confident if you if you happen to be a longer time viewer of my content which i, I kind of know that that player base a bit but I, i'm pretty sure you guys can do this i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are probably better than me so I, I mean, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I, I've noticed from viewers, you guys have an amazing ability to learn and digest faster. Maybe something that took me a little longer will take you guys a little less. So, whoa, what was that? What was that lag? This guy's aim is crazy. Got really solid aim for a plat player. Let's see here. All right, making the push up, making the push up. That alternator shots are crazy by this guy. He's got gold res, I think, so they might be able to make it. Oh my gosh, he's actually body blocking for him. Oh, unfortunate. But that damage was pretty crazy. And this other person's struggling to get up the hill. I think they could have third party just a second sooner. It's a duo versus a duo. Man, everyone's aim with the alternators crazy today. Okay, maybe not with the EV8. But listen, that, those alt everyone shouldn't sleep on the alternator. All of you guys are demons today. It's crazy. I'm just going to assume all this is spectator bug, but man, people have got some crazy shots. You guys have a comment down below. Let's see, this is close. Knockdown shields. This is another interesting thing. Just because your teammate goes down, it's technically free positioning. You have free cover. And don't sleep on that cover. If your teammate gets knocked, I mean, you essentially have their knockdown shield to play off of. It's something I have have uh, slept on before. Are they just going for the knockdown and clearing it out? It's not a bad idea at this point. Oh, they're both going. Oh my gosh. Can you get it though? 
Oh, they're so close. Dude, the box is providing so much cover there. Oh, good try, good try. But I guess it's a good example of those knockdowns. If your teammate goes down, it's not the end of the world because you do have free cover. And that cover behind the knockdown is very effective at blocking. I I sleep on that myself. But that's a really good tip. Just kind of seeing it all in real time. If you enjoyed this video, I appreciate all of you guys for hanging out, for being a part. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. A little more chill a version that we've kind of done before. I know I'm not like crazy amped up like I normally am. Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I am. I don't know. I've been just very thoughtful recently. Really thinking about how to position the content better. But if you guys enjoyed, thank you guys again. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, everybody.